Hi everyone, welcome back to our ongoing series on how to create a life operating system in Notion. Today we're going to dive into a topic that I get a lot of questions about and I've wrestled with for a long time about whether to pursue this or not. This is the master tag database. This is something that some people love and rave about and others just see it as kind of bloated and cumbersome. So we're gonna explore all the different aspects. I'll give you a quick cut to the chase. I find this to be a great idea if you're doing a comprehensive system across many parts of your life, then it becomes a really great central view into what's happening across the system. But I've also come up with an expansion of the concept that takes it, I think, to a whole nother level of value and power in the system. So I'm going to first talk about what is the standard master tag database, and then I'm going to dive into this expansion that I'm really excited about that I think makes it a no brainer for anybody implementing a broad Notion system. Now the master tag database is a concept that's been advocated by many people. Marie Poulin has been a big advocate of this and she really popularized it with a couple of videos she did a while ago and really got a lot of people thinking about this. And she's been recommending to me personally that I do this. But for a long time, I was focused more on the action part of the system, the alignment and the focus part. So the goals, projects, tasks, daily tracking, and in that area, I don't think it's that critical. You could use it. There are some places it can fit in, but it's not that critical. But when you get into the knowledge management area, and as we've been expanding our knowledge management component of the whole PPV system, it's become something that adds a lot more value. And that's where I've really seen this shine as a central vision into what's happening across your system. So let's dive into Notion and look at the different aspects of considering a master tag database. In the last video, we looked at the tool skills services vault, sort of a resources vault for when looking at and comparing different types of software, different professional service providers, contractors, membership groups, uh, professions, anything that you're researching and need to collect information and want that information available to you in an organized way going forward. This is a master database that aggregates many different types of resources and tools into one place. So in a database like this, you're going to want to be able to sort and filter by different criteria. So we had this area called functional categories, and this is pretty typical of a traditional tagging system. This is not a master tag database. This is a, a traditional uh, local database specific tagging system. So this is a fairly long one. This database justifies that. You've got all these different categories, and you'll basically tag each entry based on what's relevant to that category and you can have multiple ones, you typically will use a multi-select or a single select, but usually for tagging a multi-select, so you can add multiple tags. So this would be the multi-select right here. And then you just set up your tags and you arrange them and you color them and that's that. That's traditional tagging. Now a master tag database is where you have a database that is just tags. So each entry in the database is a different tag. So each of these could be an entry in that database. And then this database instead of having a multi-select would have a relation to the master tag database and you'd be selecting the different tags from that database, which would also give you the ability to sort and filter by those tags through the relation rather than through the multi-select. Same function. Now, one of the negatives I've always had and one of the reasons there is initially resistant is these multi-select tags just look better than relational links. Relational links don't have the color coding. They don't have this nice block. They're not as easy to just click and open and select and add. These are just a little bit quicker, simpler, and more elegant. They look better and they interact slightly better. But the tagging to three relations to a master tag database is pretty quick and easy and it works and it's not ugly. It's just not as nice and refined looking as this. So that was one of my resistance points. The other was that most of the databases I was using initially didn't need the same tags over and over again. Each database had a unique set of tags. And the whole point of the master tag database is you're applying the same tags across different databases. So this set of tags that I've called functional category here is very unique to this database. No other database that I have would want this set of tags. So it doesn't make sense to use these in a master tag database. However, as the knowledge management system I've been building has been expanding, more and more I'm finding databases would benefit from having the same tags applied to them across different databases. So increasingly I'm seeing value in a central database. Now a master tag database will have a couple advantages. 
First of all, when you update any tag in the master tag database, it instantly updates across all of them. If you change the name, if you put a little more nuance into it, or you add a slash in a second half to it, then any updates to any tag in the master tag database will populate across all the other databases using that for tagging. The biggest value though, is that the master tag database, once you've tagged all these different databases using a relation to the master tag database, that master tag database will be a central viewpoint providing visibility across your entire system for everything else tagged to those topics. So each of the items in the master tag database, when you open them, you'll see all the other databases and all the entries in each of those other databases that are tagged to it. So it, if you have a tag to graphic design, for example, then you'll see all the other references throughout the system attached to graphic design. So typically when I am curious about something, I'll just put it in the system and try it and see how I like it. If I don't like it, I'll delete it. So I started playing with the master tag database and I kept finding over and over that the same tags I was applying to the master tag database, I was also through the separate relation to the knowledge vault was tagging knowledge vault topics. And that's when it hit me. The knowledge vault should be the master tag database because you've already made a collection of all the topics that are important to you. All the topics where you want to aggregate knowledge and ideas and grow your insight into. The areas that you're already taking the best highlights from all the books and articles and videos that you're reading and watching, all the podcasts, all of your thoughts are automatically resurfacing contextually in the Knowledge Vault topics. All those books and articles are naturally resurfacing in the Knowledge Vault topics. In past videos, I've shown you how to capture articles, capture videos, capture ideas, thoughts, and notes, and have them automatically resurface at the right place in the right time in the Knowledge Vault topics by having templates that have self-referencing filters under toggles so all those notes and ideas and media are in the right topic so when you come to them, it's sitting there waiting for you. You've already built all these topics and you'll, every time you have a new topic that you're interested in, you're adding it in the Knowledge Vault. Well, there's no point in duplicating that and having a separate relation to a master tag database that just has tags, but empty workspaces. You've got not only a master tag database built into the Knowledge Vault, but you've got extensive knowledge and research already in the workspace in those vaults. And these Knowledge Vault topics are already interconnected to many other parts of your system, including the projects database, clients database, anywhere else that matters. So let's go into the knowledge vault here. This is the knowledge vault. Again here, as I showed in the last video, I've got hot topic gallery and all topic gallery. But these are all the topics in my knowledge vault. And it's a global repository of all my best thinking and all my best research by topic for all the topics I care about. This is an incredibly valuable resource as we've talked about in previous videos. In previous videos, I've shown you how to put this together. So if you're new to this, be sure to check out the series of videos right before this one. It covers all the knowledge management development we've been doing. But now we go inside one of these, let's say in biz building. This is already connected to pillars. It's connected to other items in the knowledge vault. So that's tags to other knowledge vault topics in the same database. The tool skills service vault we just saw, we've got links to any of those resources that are relevant here. The media vault, we've got links to articles and media that we've been collecting. If we had any notes and ideas on this topic, they'd be all linked here. It links to habits and routines. It links to the content pipeline. That's the content that I create or that you're creating if you're a content creator. It connects to action items. It's already connected to everything else. So this is the master tag database. And if you use this instead of a separate master tag database, you not only get the tagging and then the ability to sort all those other databases, by these topic tags, which is one of the benefits of a master tag database. You can sort and filter just as you could if you had a multi-select. But you also are now one link away through that same field without adding a second field. You're one link away from the depth of knowledge of your knowledge vault, which is where you have your best thinking and you have your deepest research. And you have, as we've said, notes and ideas will resurface here as they're linked to this database. Media research will resurface here. This one didn't have any, but if we open systems thinking down here, this one's got a lot of relations to a lot of media. So we've got a table of contents up here. This is all the template that we apply. We've got notes and ideas resurfacing here. And also just FYI, I've added meetings to my notes, meetings and ideas vault. So the notes and ideas vault added meetings. I was about to add a meetings database, but I realized notes are notes, whether they're a random thought or whether they're for a meeting. 
I've just made it such that there's now a template for meeting notes. So I may do a video on that in the future, but meetings will have a special template, but they will be notes within the notes, meetings, and ideas database. Just a quick insight into that. The media here, all these articles will resurface at the right place and right time because they're linked to the topic in the Knowledge Vault. And so this is here waiting for me when I come back to expand on this topic and I've got all this research all laid out. So not only do these tags to the, the Knowledge Vault functioning as the master tag database give you the sorting and filtering capabilities, it gives you a direct link to all the knowledge you have collected and aggregated on that topic. And then in reverse, one of the benefits that you've always had with the master tag database is you have visibility across your system of everything on that topic as it appears across the system. Well, now in this central repository where we're aggregating all our best thinking and all the best insights on that topic, we also have the master tag database's visibility of all the links across the system, across projects, pillars, tools and services, vault, notes and ideas, media, habits and routines, content, action items. We see everything across the system that's related to this. So we, in the last video, we talked about the tools, skills, services vault. If we had any that were connected here, let's say we're looking at API and automations here. These are services available that are relevant to API and automation. So this is a category where I'm researching different people who are skilled with APIs, code, and web developing. The workspace in that entry in that database is filled with research on different service providers in that area. Then there are a couple individuals, a company, and of course, Zapier is all related to that. So all the tools, software, service providers, and skills resources that I have collected in that database are now visible here from this research area, which is fantastic. That's super relevant. So to have all that visibility that you would get from a master tag database added and inherent in the Knowledge Vault makes the Knowledge Vault even more powerful. So by killing two birds with one stone, you make both of them more powerful. The master tag database is turbocharged because it has all the power of the knowledge vault. And the knowledge vault is turbocharged because it now has the power of a master tag database. So in any database that would be helpful to sort and organize and filter by topic, you will then just make sure it's tagged to the knowledge vault. Of course, you were probably already doing that anyway, because you want to have that one click access to all the insight that's already gathered there. The one caveat is that in theory, you might come up with some topics you want to sort and organize by, but you're not really interested in building and collecting knowledge on. Well, that's fine. So you can just add that to the Knowledge Vault and just not build out the knowledge within the workspace, which will let you then sort and filter by that topic. But at any point, if you have ideas or insights on that topic, it's sitting there waiting for you with a place to put it. So it's there if you want to grow into it. And if you've added it as a topic you're sorting and filtering by, there's a decent chance you are at some point going to want to add some information, save some information on that topic, and now you've got a place waiting for you for that. So jumping back to the Tool Skills Services Vault, I have updated the title to the Knowledge Vault relational link. I now call it tag slash knowledge vault because it's both the tag that we would typically sort by for our global tagging system, and it's a link to the Knowledge Vault. I just did this so it's clear when I demonstrate different vaults, you'll see this tag not slash knowledge vault relation consistently throughout my system. So here we've jumped into one of my notes in the notes, meetings, and ideas vault. You'll see tag slash knowledge vault, and you'll see the two tags, but also the knowledge vault entries. So quick access to knowledge and also the new global tagging system. Jumping here into a media vault entry, this is an article, and you'll see we have the tag slash knowledge vault relation. So we've got quick access to any related knowledge vault entries functioning also as the global tags for these articles. And in projects and in tasks and in the client operation database, anywhere you go, you're going to have a relation to the Knowledge Vault, both for quick access to the knowledge and for the global tagging system. So there you have it. I think that is just the perfect way to implement a master tag database, merge it with the Knowledge Vault, and make all of that information and all of that visibility and all that sorting and filtering capability all part of the same system, all part of the same network. And that all just emerged organically because that is essentially what the Knowledge Vault is. It's the topics that are of interest to you. So you naturally would want to use that for filtering and sorting. It'll let you organize and select very specific views across any dashboard anywhere in the system. It gives you a lot of nuance and finesse as to what appears and what doesn't appear. 
in any dashboard anywhere you want. And it just makes the Knowledge Vault even more powerful, giving you that transparency and visibility into every activity across your system by topic. And I think it's particularly elegant to have this one specialty vault serving as a cohesive organization and connective tissue across the entire system. It's touching pillars, it's touching the pipelines, and it's touching all the vaults, organizing all the knowledge management, but the whole system is unified in a way through this topic category structure we've already built in the knowledge vaults, but now serving as a master tag database to bring organization cohesiveness and interconnectivity across all parts of the pillars pipelines and vaults system so coming soon we're going to do an enhanced look at pillars i'm going to give a better explanation than i did previously i think there were some flaws in the previous presentation on pillars plus the concept of pillars has been expanded as we're now moving into version two of the pillars pipelines and vaults system the course that i'm developing is going to be about this version two expansion but also a lot of the videos to come on this youtube channel will be about features added through this version two enhancement. We're already seeing some of them. What we're talking about now and what we've talked about in the last several videos are version two enhancements to the system. So at some point we'll sort of unveil the new approach and largely it's based on an expanded role of pillars within the system. If you're interested in the course, there's a link below in the show notes to get on the mailing list to receive all the updates of the upcoming course announcements, which will be coming very soon. And then the course will actually be beginning in October so if you're watching this real time, then that's coming up. If you're watching this weeks or months later, it's already happened. Either way, all the information that's current is available in the link in the show notes below. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave thoughts or questions below or join us on Twitter for a broader conversation and hit like if you found this video valuable. I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work super hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.